hi, good morning. This is a morning vlog instead of a nighttime vlog. I don't think you've ever seen this apartment in the daylight. Usually by the time I get to doing the vlog, it's, it's late at night. But I thought of a way that I can catch up on all the vlogs I've missed. And I'm going to do a couple today around one particular kind of subject, um, which breaks down into sort of lots of smaller subject sub subjects. You know what I mean. I'm traveling tonight. So I'm going to New York, I don't know if I've mentioned that. <laughs> um, so I'm flying out to New York at two o'clock in the morning tonight. And I was sitting down this morning, um, planning out my day, um, syncing it with my calendar, making sure that I had everything ready. And actually I thought, this is quite a important part of your life as an entrepreneur. And even if you're not jetting off to New York and living this fantastic um, jet set lifestyle, you're still going to travel, so you're still going to have things that come up. For example, a very good friend of mine who has just started her company, she was down in London yesterday, so she was negotiating trains and sleeper trains back up and everything like that. So you're going to come up against things which are somewhere else that you want to go to, and you've got to put that, fit that in with your diary and still make sure you get everything done. And likewise, around about travel, just even general travel, I was always really bad at. I'm quite disorganised at heart. I tend to make a mess. I'm not particularly, um, I'm not great at like putting things in the right place and everything like that. So that was what a major lesson I had to learn when I started my company. And then it was a major drive to be able to afford a PA <laughs> because I was just like not organizing myself at all. But when you've got so much to do in your day, even if a couple of balls drop, if the majority of them go ahead, then you're doing enough work anyway. So I just hit it with absolute hustle and just worked my ass off. And that was to cover for the fact that I was pretty disorganized. And then at least if you did forget to get back to somebody, they totally understood because they could see how hard you were working and how genuine you were anyway. Um, so when it came to travel, I have so many horror packing stories. It's unbelievable. Like I went to New York in Jan uh, February and I went from Kuwait. So I'd obviously came from, from Glasgow to live in Kuwait. Um, I brought a particular wardrobe for Kuwait and it consisted of like sandals, you know, flip flops, um, not t-shirts, but you know, tops, um, summer dresses. And I went to New York and I didn't have one pair of boots, I didn't have one pair of jeans, um, I didn't have any business clothes that would be suitable for February and it was absolutely freezing. <clears throat> so I'm down to this really, I can't believe I'm telling this story, I'm supposed to be talking to you about this. But anyway, I'm down to this really, really, really super expensive store in New York, which I didn't mean to go to. I'd actually googled Primark. For anybody you're watching in the UK, <clears throat> you know what Primark is. For anybody in the US, I don't think you have Primark yet. It's basically like a discount clothes store that do fairly decent clothes. And um, I googled Primark and it came up there was one in New York. So I jumped in a taxi, hadn't managed to go to the bank yet to change dollars. So I only had about like 20 bucks or something like that. Jumped in a taxi, go down to Primark, get a taxi to drop me off. And it's not a Primark shop, it's Primark's actual headquarters that are there. So it's like an office. So I'm stranded because I am in downtown. I'm dressed in running gear. I was out running in the morning. It's about nine o'clock in the morning. So I just need to jump in somewhere really, really quickly and get some clothes. So it's this really expensive store. So of course, as soon as I walk in, you know, looking like a tramp, just off a flight a couple of hours earlier and running clothes, it's nine in the morning. I look like I've not slept. Um, and they kind of eye me up and down. And eventually I explain to them, I'm here on a business trip. I need to get some clothes. Um, I'm really sorry I'm coming in, underdressing, so we had a good laugh about it anyway. So they picked out a couple of outfits, came to like 100, 200 bucks or something. I go to the till and I go to pay and my card gets declined. And my card gets declined because my bank had freaked out that I was in America. So when I'd went to the hotel to check in the, the, the night before when I got in, they'd allowed that transaction but then put a hold in the card and I hadn't realised. So not only did I look homeless, I came across like I had no money as well. It was the most embarrassing thing ever. And I really felt like the next day giving it a pretty woman moment, you know, going back in, you know, dressed like a normal person and being like, hi, it's me, but I couldn't face it. So that's how bad I am at packing. Um, now, I've not been able to pay somebody yet to pack for me. I think that's just a whole different level of um, outsourcing. 
But what I have been able to do is to bring in an executive PA who gets me so organised that I've got time to actually focus on this stuff and I can I can plan and organise. Likewise, I've developed a few organisational and list-making habits over the last few months which have really helped. So the first vlog for today is I want to talk about pre-travel and how you make sure that you get everything done, how you make sure that you're totally packed and how you can lay out your, your timetable. Now, first of all, I start with just a standard list, bog standard list. Now, I'll show you how this links with my calendar because my calendar is laid out entirely differently. That's not laid out in a to-do list or in a um, or in a list. My calendar is laid out like this. Can you see? So it's all meetings and it's all areas of focus. So meetings with people are in near the priority. Areas of focus are in um, to, to build up the time between meetings. So you'll see I have practically no time, that's 4 a.m. in the morning. I have really no time during the day. Um, but that's good, that's how you want it to go. So added to that, this is my pre-New York list. So this is my to-do list for today. And it's got a mixture of things on it. So some are business things that you know I need to do. For example, um, I have a business proposal from somebody that I said to them, a startup proposal. I told them I would read through, give them some advice on. I need to finish reading through that um, because I'm meeting them tomorrow in New York. Um, I need to finish packing. So I've listed generally the things that I want. So once you have a list, then you have your sublists as well. So it means you can tick these off as you're going. So for example, the really important things that I need to remember are to take like suntan lotion, uh, books, work folders, notebooks, clothes, that kind of stuff, because you'll always pack the basics, but you'll always forget something. Things like hair dryers, straighteners, all that kind of stuff. Uh, what I usually do is when I'm getting ready, I have a shower before I fly, I have a shower and when I'm getting ready, everything I do, like brush my teeth, okay, finish that, that goes in the case. Straighten my hair, brush, okay, that goes in the case. It's like whatever you need to get ready, just put it in the case um, once you're done. Um, so also the, the, the important things are to make sure that when you arrive you don't have too much faffing about I think is the technical term so change enough dollars or whatever currency is for your first day make sure that you can get like I'm going to New York get Uber so I, can, I know I can get an Uber from the airport to the hotel and I know I've got enough that when I arrive at the hotel I can just dump my stuff and go out for some food so maybe like 50 bucks something like that um, so make sure that you've got enough enough there to arrive and also set your your goal list for what you're achieving when you get on the plane and when you arrive because what you don't want to be doing is you don't want to be getting off the plane and going oh okay, well, what do I do now you know so I know that I arrive in New York tomorrow afternoon at two o'clock I know that all I have to do is go to the hotel I'm going to um, take a book, I'm going to go out for some food, I'm going to take the laptop, I'm going to catch up on what emails I've missed um, and all of this work that I've done on the plane I will then be connected to Wi-Fi so that I can send it over to the relevant people and then I'm going to a Yankees game so I'm really excited about that. Um, also I put in time for sleep, right? You need to very quickly get used to the new time zone that you're going to and to do that, you're going to have an extended period with no sleep. So when I go to New York, I can usually go about 20, 22 hours with no sleep. Now, that's not too bad if you've had a sleep before. So I can do that, no problem. But when you're doing that on maybe, like for example, last night I had five hours sleep. So if I was to wake up this morning and go all the way through and not sleep on the plane and then not sleep until um, you know, 20, 22 hours into tomorrow, which is 10 o'clock tomorrow night, that's like, a solid two days with no sleep. You can't do that. You can't function and you need to be alert and functionable. Functionable. Yeah. Um, so sleep. So I've actually scheduled in sleep today from 4.30 to 8.15. So that gave me like just under four hours. So that's just like a, a night sleep, a really, really short night sleep. So it means that if I sleep for an hour on the plane, I'm totally sorted. If I don't get sleep in the plane, it just means that I'll get a really good sleep tomorrow night when I go to my bed. But at least I'll be alert when I get to New York and at least I'm not relying on sleep in the plane. Unless you're flying business class, never rely on sleeping on the plane because it never works. Um, so small things like putting, once I've slept in the bed uh, last night, taking all the bedding off, sending that to, to laundry. That's because it's in Kuwait and everything goes to laundry. I'm not just extremely elitist. I do usually do my own washing. Um, meeting with my colleagues in Kuwait to go over the strategy for the next few days. Making sure that everybody in the UK is aware of what they're doing for the next few days and, and if they need me for anything, I'm unavailable. The most important thing is when you're not going to be available, second guess every single person who you think might be trying to get in touch with you. 
I mean, out of offices on your computer are fantastic, but if somebody's relying on you for a decision, an out of office is not going to give them any comfort. So think about all the priorities that you have and contact the people who you think may need you. And it's just a very small courtesy email. I'm going to be traveling for the next 24 hours just to let you know I'm unavailable. Is there anything that you potentially need me for that you want me to have a look at before I go? How nice is that? People really respond to that. Um, leaving out everything that I have here for my colleagues to take over. So this is when you get to the stage where you've got different offices and you've got different locations, right? Just remember that it can't be you that does everything. If I have all the information and I have keys for an apartment and I'm on the other side of the world, that's not going to work. So make sure that before you leave any location, whoever is dealing with stuff in your absence has all the tools at their disposal with which to do that. That seems like a really, really, really simple thing, but it's actually quite important. Okay, so that's all my things that I need to do. So basically all I do with that list is I just like tick them off. And then I do, so for the, the five or six hours before I fly, I make sure that I've got a checklist which is done in a different way. And I actually learned this skill of my brother-in-law when he was cooking Christmas dinner, so thanks Gordon. So this skill is time-based. So basically what you do is you, you put down the time that you want to leave for the airport, right? So I put, I want to leave the airport at 11. So let me just put the 11 in here. Okay, so 11 is my goal. Now, after when I'm at the airport, I write a very brief list of my goals. So when I'm at the airport, I want to vlog, I want to journal, which is the thing that I've started doing every day, uh, do my action tasks from my calendar, which is something I'll go through with you again, uh, social media, water for playing, pick up a book, right? So then I, I work backwards. So if I want to be leaving at 11, I want to have my case closed and ready to go at 10.45. If I want my case closed and ready to go at 10.45, what time am I going to have to have a shower at and get ready to get everything in the case? Right, probably 9.30. Um, so then my last meeting of the day is 8.30. So I need to make sure that meeting of the day is finished for 9.30. So then before that, I need to fit in a sleep. So I need to make sure that I'm awake for this last meeting. So if I go to sleep at 5.15, because I've got meetings with Lauren and Tasman at 4.30. So if you work back like that, then it means that instead of just ticking things off a list, you're actually on a timetable table for the remainder of your day. That's how I find it works. Um, if you're traveling, especially for business and other people are relying on you, it's your job to make sure that you're as organized as possible because the worst thing in the world is being however many meters you are in the air and realizing that you forgot something and somebody on the ground can't get a hold of you and is stuck with either a solution that they, they uh, sorry a problem that they don't have a solution for or an irate customer or even worse they were relying on you for something and you've let them down and now they can't fulfill an obligation that they had so i know you'll be rushing about i know you'll be busy but please just take 10 minutes out of your day to make sure that if somebody's looking for you you've thought enough in advance to be able to give them at least the foundation of what they need before you arrive at your new destination and when you do get there find where the nearest pub is and be able to go and get some food and a nice beer that's just a handy travel tip number 412 okay i'll speak to you more today and um, we've got a couple more things to cover on this and uh, have a great morning cheers bye